Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot and welcome back to MakerQuest. In this uh, first episode of Exploring Electronics, part two, we are going to figure out how many coin cell batteries it takes to run a car. Sweet. So if you're confused, be sure to watch part one or maybe rewatch it because sometimes that helps. So in part one, we figured out that we need about 156 coin cell batteries to get roughly the same battery capacity or current over time as a car battery. And actually, um, I realized that car batteries are more like 75 amp hours, so we'd actually need about 334 coin cells to get roughly the same battery capacity as a car battery. Okay, cool. So what about the battery voltage? Car batteries are usually about 12 volts, while little coin cells are 3 volts. So how can we get an effective circuit voltage with 3 volts? Well, I guess we'll need some more information which is fine because we have the internet at our disposal and we can look up pretty much anything we want on Google or whatever your preferred search engine is. So when we do that, we'll find that there are a bunch of dudes and probably some ladies that didn't really get credit that figured out all the really important properties of circuits a long time ago. And two of those main dudes were Ohm and Kirchhoff. And those two guys gave us the three fundamental uh, circuit laws, which are Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. Uh, we don't need to worry about Ohm's law just yet. We'll get to that in a little bit uh, down the road. And uh, so when we look at Kirchhoff's laws, those are what will help us figure out how to get uh, 12 volts from a three volt battery. So Kirchhoff's current law tells us that the amount of current flowing into a point is the same as the current flowing out of that point. Okay, that seems super obvious, but it's actually really profound and really cool. And basically what it tells us is that electrical charge is conserved. So essentially the charge that you start with has to go somewhere. It doesn't just disappear. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, Kirchhoff's current law. And Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that the sum of the voltages around a closed loop is zero. You can also think of this as the conservation of energy. Since voltage is just the work done in a circuit and work is a type of energy. And basically uh, this makes a lot of sense because same thing with charge, the amount of energy that you put into the circuit has to go somewhere um, and it will be consumed uh, by the components in your circuit. And sometimes uh, some of it might be converted into heat, but basically all that energy has to go somewhere. Okay, cool. So how can we use these two laws to change the effective circuit voltage of our coin cell battery? Well, basically, if we know that current going into a component is the same as the current coming out of that component, then we know that current has to be the same in series. And likewise, if we know that the voltage in a closed loop is zero, or the sum of the voltages is zero, then we know that the voltage across two components in parallel have to be the same. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. What, what are series and parallel? Well, series electrical connections are connections made head to tail or in line, like this. And parallel connections are connections made head to head or in loops, like this. Okay, cool. So that basically tells us that if we want to increase the voltage of our coin cell battery from three volts to 12 volts, we can add four of them in series. That will give us an effective circuit voltage that's equivalent to our car battery. But then we also need to add in the 334 coin cells to get the total capacity that we need. So basically we would need 1,336 coin cells to run a car, which is a lot of coin cells. And honestly, the hardest part would be hooking them up. In an ideal world, I would totally test this, but unfortunately I don't have 1,336 coin cells or the time to hook them up. But if this has been done or if it's done in the future, please feel free to share that in the comments below. Cool, so now we know a lot about the basics of circuits and how to characterize them. We can also talk about the power generated by or consumed by a particular component. And power is given in units of watts, which are work over time. So how do we get units of watts from voltage and current? Well, I'll let you think about that. And if you have the answer, please uh, add it in the comments below. And I will answer that question in episode two of Exploring Electronics. Um, 
Also remember, if you know the equation, be sure to explain why it is the way that it is. Um, and we want to do that because what's really interesting is when you dig deep and ask questions about the way the universe works and how we interpret it. Just memorizing stuff is boring. So explain why it is the way it is. Cool. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for part two. Episode two.